The mid-season finale of the Gossip Girl reboot has left several fans shocked and at the same time looking forward to the continuation. It's the first half of the season, yet so many things have happened, which thickens the plot. In today's episode, we'll be laying down several crucial moments that left us hanging with our mouths open. Here are the five biggest OMG moments in the Gossip Girl mid-season finale. The Joby Kiss First things first, the Julian Obi Zoya triangle is starting to pick up the pace. Although, as a standalone event, it's not as riveting as some of the other happenings in the show as a whole and was pretty much predictable, given how Zoya showed up during the protest unknowingly and seeing Julie and Obi there together. But love it or hate it, one of the standout scenes at the time is Team Joby sharing a kiss in the middle of chaos in the crowd. But but really though, the protest somewhat reminds us of Kendall Jenner's Pepsi ad for some reason, since it's giving the same energy. And since we already mentioned Julian, let's get a little in-depth with her more. What is she really outside her father's influence? As the equivalent of Blake Lively's Serena Vander Woodson in the original GG, Julian has a lot to live up to. As it stands, she's already decided that being an influencer could help set her up up for a bright future, where she now pours her efforts instead of studying for college entrance exams. As an influencer, having your own brand is what sets you apart from others and serves as one's identity, which her father directly asks, and your brand is? Being 16, we all went through the trouble of finding our paths at such an early age, so we're bound to explore more and more during this time. But in her case, she's also carrying the weight of her huge following behind her. Talk about peer pressure. Of course, being an influencer is beyond just aesthetics. It's also a way to earn a living, but in her case, she doesn't even know who she is beyond being sellable. Several companies fought over her for her unique voice, but because she attended the protest, she was dropped in a heartbeat. Uncertainty is a pretty common theme among young adult shows, so it's not so bad to use it as a plot point, although it's proven time and time again that it's a little too frustrating to watch sometimes, and Julian's case is no exception to that. But luckily, the show managed to spice things up with the love triangle between her, Obi, and Zoya. The show does need to depict a better job on this particular storyline because like many rich characters, Julian doesn't have anything to lose. If her influencer shtick doesn't work out, she can always lean on her father's support, which could get pretty boring. After all, the best success stories come from those who faced against the odds with a lot to lose but have a lot more to gain. The Audrey, Aki, and Max thruple finally happened. If Julian Calloway is GG 2.0 Serena, then we have Audrey as Blair Waldorf, Aki Menzi as Nate Archibald, and Max Wolf as Chuck Bass. Having another three-way pair in the show is a welcomed OMG moment, and to say we've been looking forward to it is kind of an understatement. Nothing less from the classy thruple to get their first time together over a fine bed of cooked lamb. It may not be as intense as we hoped, but it's also a promise for something more. Thank goodness for Audrey's plan in patching up relationships wearing that outfit. It's like everything can be solved with the help of a little black dress. Although we gotta admit, threesomes are now more widely accepted, so we gotta thank the changing times to see this development on the show. Max fends off Rafa's stalkerish advances. Another OMG moment moment, and a good one to boot, that we're more than welcome to see is how Max managed to fend off Rapa Caparo's unwelcome advances. Of course, somebody had to be extra loco in the story, and Rafa perfectly portrays that character, maybe for now, but who knows if we get another new character in the second half's premiere. Rafa has been targeting Max with an STI rumor leak to GG, and in retaliation, the latter sends a video of them having sex to Gigi, though Rafa managed to delete the video by weaseling
Wendling and Decade's crew, which gave us relief. We're still on season one, so there may be chances for Max to develop into somewhat of a villain in the show. In the original Gossip Girl, there was a plot where they attempted his character to be a rapist before he became one of the anti-hero characters in the show. Anyway, back to Rafa. He's even cuckoo enough to target Max's father, Roy, who by the grace of the gods, had a semblance of what's going on and declined. We even see Roy come to a reproachment with Gideon, his estranged husband. Aki finally comes out, but not on his own terms. Coming in fourth place in today's OMG moments belongs to none other than Aki, and yes, it has to do with his sexuality. Although we did say that times today are more open, it never made it any less difficult for the LGBTQ community. In fact, we still have a long way to go. Kudos to Aki's parents for supporting their son for being bisexual, which also includes his father, who is portrayed by none other than effing Malcolm McDowell. The downside of this? Aki was unable to come out on his own and was accidentally outed by Audrey over dinner. If that wasn't worse enough, his dad even took it up a notch higher and outed him on national TV. And for what? Well, as the company's way of declaring they will never mistreat any of their employees who identify as the LGBTQ, since his son is also part of said community. It's hard to be an Aki Menzies sometimes. We feel for you, Aki. The brewing war among Gossip Girls. The mid-season finale also ended with a brewing war among the Gossip Girls, which is a far cry from the original GG. In the original series, it wasn't until the last few episodes that we discover the real identity of Gossip Girl, but in the reboot, it's been established that the English teacher, Kate Keller, leads a ring of teachers as Gossip Girl. You know what they say. Those who are busy discussing other people's lives are probably not happy about theirs. And it's much worse for Kate, since she created several monsters with Gossip Girl. It's way below the belt in how Kate leads Nick along just so she could get a hold of any information about his dead wife, which she uses to manipulate her 50 15-year-old daughter. It wasn't long before Kate got a taste of her own medicine when Jordan, portrayed by Adam Chandler Barat, posted a picture of her date with Nick. We all hate nosy neighbors, which is pretty much why Gossip's Girl identity needed to be hidden in the majority of the original series, since if we'd known it was Dan Humphrey all along, we would have hated his guts on the get-go. So what could we expect in the second half of the first season? Based on episode 6 alone, the setup of the second half is pretty much decided if we're to follow the events that took place during the episode, so it's possible that we may see Julie bumbling her way as she tries to establish herself as an influencer, but then we also see how her ex-boyfriend walks back into her life and even shares a kiss in a pivotal scene. Will Obi be in here for the long run, and will he play a significant role in Julian's success as an influencer? but the two need to set their priorities straight, since Obi is currently dating Zoya, as if Julia needs to complicate things with her half-sister all the more. But more important than that, we are more excited about how the other love triangle among Aki, Audrey, and Max will play out, rather than Rafa's stalkerish actions. We're rooting more for these three sexual explorations, since it's consensual, so it's a hard pass to vengeful teachers. Sorry not sorry, Rafa. With nothing too shocking happening in the first six episodes, we are pretty confident that the majority of the cast will return to reprise their respective roles, with show producer Joshua Safran told The Wrap that it will feature cameos and callbacks from the original series, although he also further stressed that these cameos will not include the original stars from the previous one. So far, the show still hasn't made an official announcement on when the second half half will premiere. We only know that it'll be happening sometime this November and that it will continue to follow the weekly release schedule. With that, we're ending today's episode that lists the five biggest OMG moments in Gossip Girl's mid-season finale. 
What are you looking forward to in the second half of the season? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button with the notification bell on before you go. Thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next episode.